I have just hit the go live button. I think we're live. Yeah, it's got the little eyeball thing. Yeah, I see the eyeballs. I see the eyeballs. Um, Just to make sure I have the right story. We're doing one off of next web, right? No, 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 no. We're doing the one from uh, directly Face- from them. Facebook. Hold on. Are you in episode 201? Hi, everybody. It's the pre-show, by the way. Hi, everyone. Uh, we've, we've pressed the button. I forgot we were live here for a second. Yeah, Um. here. It's at the top here, this link. Uh, Sweet. Or wait. Post it. Here. Oh, where'd you get that link from? Uh, I searched the title, and that was the first one that came Oh, out. yeah. Do that one. That one's directly from Facebook. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I think we're live. So, uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the pre-show. If you're looking for the actual show and this is uh, post-recording, go ahead and skip forward about 30 minutes. Um, it, I, I mean, you know, whatever. It'll get you there. <laughs> It'll get You'll you there. You'll find it. You'll find it. Uh, yeah. As, as for here's the pre-show. This is where we put together the show notes and we are uh, just just talking. Um, Grabbing the story. there. Man, Facebook really put out a serious like paper with this. Dude, this thing is yeah, this thing is uh pretty cool. Um how crazy is it that this is done by Facebook? I don't know, like in 2007, I never would have thought of Facebook doing this stuff. I have some complicated feelings about Facebook and (laughs) (laughs) yeah, the story is not making it easier. (laughs) Yeah, that's a very, very good point. I feel Uh, like I wonder how many people have that feeling because I feel like the general populace that maybe doesn't pay attention to the other stuff they do or isn't just interested in like technology, they may not even like think about the fact that this giant social media company does so much. They do. Like, I used to be really um, like really envious uh, or not envious. It, I used to have like a lot of admiration for Google because of the stuff they create. And I love, I love a lot of their products. Um, I mean, geez, some of them I can't even live without, but like this, the amount of research and content and development that Facebook is doing is just insane to me. It's a, it's a crazy time. It is a crazy time. You know what else is crazy, Blake? Um, so remember last week how I came up with a post-show uh, list of stuff to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. How many steps was it? It was like 12. No, it was like six steps, right? It was six Seven? steps. You want to know where I'm at now? Two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-three steps. <laughs> uh, that I take after the podcast to make sure everything is uh all good to go. Here, how I'll, did I'll, it get to twenty-three? Hold on. As as I was doing it last week, I added more and more to it. Yeah. Um, here's the list. Are you ready? So, in yep. terms of content generation, we have the YouTube thumbnail. We have the podcast art. Those are two things that we do on the post show. We have the audio production. I do that off off uh, stream. Uh, show description. That is something that I also do off stream. It's mostly done, but sometimes it's just a uh, it's just a uh, it's just a double check to make sure that all the all the stuff in the show description is up to date, like the links um, and the description for all the stuff that we talk about. Uh, in terms of social media. Um, we post it up on SoundCloud, and I guess that's kind of the, our hosting, right? But then we um, we have some automation, but it's a little buggy right now, and we're not quite getting where we want with that. So we post it up on SoundCloud. We post it to our social channels. Um, we have to post it on Instagram with our art and story. Uh, for Twitch, we have to go in. We have to highlight the show, the actual show, the start and end point of the show, so that way it stays up there. Um, And we have to update the thumbnail and description on Twitch. We have to document any clips that, you know, may have come from the stream. If there's something stupid that happens or, you know, anything like that, we have to download the full show from Twitch. Um, (laughs) Then we put uh, the audio file uh, from the audio production part of it. We put that into Otter AI, which is a transcript service. So that way we get the transcript of the entire episode. Uh, and then from YouTube, we have to update the description because when we put it in earlier, um, yeah. uh, oh, thanks, Erica. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Um, oh, hey there. 
Uh, Glad you so, got a notification on your phone. That's awesome. Yeah. So so then we uh, let's see here. Yeah, we we um, where was I? YouTube. We update the description. We upload the thumbnail. We add it to our playlists. For the website, for our website, what we do is we update the show description. It has a bad ingest, so it kind of just pulls it in as a weird uh, blob of text. Um, we have to attach the YouTube link to that show, so that way everyone can see the actual YouTube video or listen to the audio. Uh, we have to add guests, which is a new feature that we're kind of playing with on the website. So now we actually have a full guests page of people that's been on the show. We're still populating that. We're not ready to announce that. Well, excuse me. We're not ready to announce that officially yet, but it's something that we're working on. So we're actually giving our guests their own page on the website. Um, and here, I'll actually show you that. So you can actually like follow. Hold oh, on. you so this serious? Is, this is this is stream only. So um, I'm cool with showing the video here and describing it. But look, so let me pull this up. Yeah. So this is what it looks like behind the scenes. What? That's you can see sick. all of our guests. Uh, and I think if we go and just kill this dashboard here, we should be able to see it from like this is not a public. I mean, it's public page, but you can't like. Oh, no, people, maybe. I don't know. This. I've been playing around a lot with our website uh, and have been making some continuous improvements over here. Anyway, uh, here's all our guests. We're you know populating with images. We're linking them to episodes. So if you were to go to um, one of these, uh, one one of these fine guests uh, web pages, right? Like, let me uh, give me one minute here. Let me uh, see if I can pull up a link for one of them because there's uh, it's pretty cool. Here, let's do Elise. Uh, she is, she has the record. Oh, does she? Well, that, yeah, that makes sense. Cause she's, she's done like correspondence stuff. She's been on the podcast yeah. episodes. She's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. Here, let me, um, yeah, here we go. So it, let's, let's go ahead and put in Elise here. I'll just go ahead and do that. Here's Elise, right? It's, it gives you like a little blurb about her. You can go to her LinkedIn or whatever and see every episode that she's ever been on. Um, so here's all the healthcare symposium uh, coverage from 2019, all the episodes she's ever been on. It's pretty cool. And then you can click on these, of course, and, and actually go to them. Um, and, you know, we're, we're working on linking up some of the videos, right? Like this is when we were still doing the produced videos. So you'll be able to see that on there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do on our web page <laughs> going through all the backlog and doing it all. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So we're, we're working on that end of things. I don't know where that even came from. Oh, yeah. I was going over my list of stuff that we do uh, in the post show. Um, let me. Uh, where's. Ah, here it is. OK, hang on. Let's kill that. We'll bring this back up. Um, yeah, so I was going over my post show stuff. Let me see here. What else we got? Uh, Oh, wait, no, that's last week's episode. Why did I still have those notes up? Okay, so in terms of the website, we have um, yeah, attaching the YouTube link to the actual episodes. That's what I was just describing. We have the add guests if applicable. So if we have anybody else on the show, um, we have to add the captions that we've got from Otter AI onto that page. Uh, and then for Patreon, we have to do a whole separate stuff for Patreon, right? We have to make sure that that full episode is downloaded from Twitch. We have to convert that into audio and then insert you know insert the uh show audio into that so that way it's just one long episode for our patrons um we have to upload the patreon exclusive episode we have to schedule patrons choose the news we have to schedule the weekly q a for monday um so there's a lot there's a lot that we have to do in the post show and i think we may actually add a couple additional steps for you blake we talked about before the show but we'll see we'll see um, <laughs> yeah, wanna... I was actually going to have you walk me through some of that. and Maybe we'll spend some of the post show doing a yeah, bit of that. Let's do that. Yeah, I think I think that would be um, so if, if you're there's so few people that check out the pre and post show at this point. So I'm happy you, to... s you say that. But uh, honestly, I had two people approach me to this week and said they listened to all of it, like the pre and the post. I mean, maybe that's a. A misnomer because we did like episode 200 and there was a lot of content surrounding it on LinkedIn and wherever else. Yeah, you know, I think LinkedIn was really what was drawing people in because there was a fair amount of interaction from both yourself, me, like other people that were, you know, commenting about it and stuff like that. So 
it's interesting. I thought it was funny that people would even listen to like the pre and post without being on the streaming platform. I thought that was kind of the benefit of it, but it's it's cool. Kind of fun to know that people like to listen to the extra banter, yeah. if you will. Yeah, it, it is fun um, because this is where you and I, Blake, just kind of get to hang out and make the show notes. A thing, and, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is where the magic happens, if you will. Um, I do want to mention LinkedIn because uh, we had some issues last week. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know what's going on with LinkedIn, Blake? Yeah, so I got, yeah, so tell tell everybody else, and then I have questions. <laughs> yeah. So here's what's going on with LinkedIn. So apparently, uh, you can't just stream on LinkedIn. It's not something that you can just plug in and go. Um, even though the tool that we use, Restream, uh, which, hang on, here you go, up, wait, up, there it is, right up there, Restream, yeah. uh, it allows us to connect to it um, and to connect to our company page. It does not allow us to stream to it. Uh, and the reason for that is because you have to apply to become a streamer um, on linked on the LinkedIn platform, and we did. We applied for it after shortly after last week's episode. We got denied, and that's okay. <laughs> Hold on, it's it's okay. So the reason why we got denied is because we didn't have uh, appropriate history with LinkedIn. Um, you know, both Blake and I are in good standing. We're not like flagged for uh, any weirdness there, but. The, uh, the issue was that our company page didn't have enough history posts. So we're trying um, to rectify that by posting all our episodes up there, um, as well as some of the other stuff that we've actually been working on behind the scenes. We'll announce it properly on the show, but just to let you all know, we're kind of doing like these news roundups now um, where we are, you know, actually kind of documenting the stuff that we do every week. So, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been doing these office hours. Up until now, we've just kind of thrown them into the Slack. Um, and now that we have a Discord too, I was kind of looking at a solution to, um, you know, kind of to tie them together. So if something was posted in one, it posts in the other. Still working on that weird automation bit. Um, managing two communities is a little weird, but, you know, we're, again, we're kind of A B testing those. Um, and then the other bit is that. Uh, so we're, we're taking all those news stories now. We're actually putting them together in a blog post. I can show this in the pre-show since, you know, I'm not going to actually pull this up during the actual show because it's audio only. Um, but I will bring this up now for everyone to see. So um, we're kind of doing, let me see here. Let me pull this up. So this is this, is this week's. We just did this week's here. Uh, and what we're doing is kind of this weekly news. And we'll tag it with the date. And it's Tuesdays. You can check me out here on Twitch, or I guess wherever you're watching, I'm on Twitch. Um, and we, uh, so yeah, fi find me on Twitch on Tuesdays. I, I go through all these stories, but basically saying, hey, we got something different this week. We're posting a roundup of all the news um, through the use of this blogging tool on our website that we have. Um, and basically, you know, we'll, um, we're going to pull in stuff from the, the stuff that our, community members on Slack and Discord pull in. Uh, we're going to share this bit to all of our social, right? LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And speaking of LinkedIn, Erica in the chat says, LinkedIn is actually super good for business marketing, but they have so many annoying things on their platform too. Blah, hopes it works out for you all. Me too. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Because even um, the instructions were kind of vague on what they provided us. Yeah. It's it's weird. So we'll we'll just try to keep posting there and hope that you know we kind of meet their criteria in sixty days. Hopefully, in sixty days, that's two months. We will have posted like <laughs> a fair at, amount of stuff. Yeah, at least because we have four podcast episodes. We're doing four of these a month, and then we're doing a monthly recap of these as well. Uh, so that's nine a month. So we'll have posted eighteen additional posts by then. Uh, spread out throughout the week. So, you know, maybe, maybe then who knows? We'll, we'll see. Um, anyway, th this, this, uh, I want to keep going over this here really quick because this is, um, this is a blog. So we're doing two different categories, right? Our top news stories, if you will. This is the one where I think Blake and I can sit down for an extended period of time, sit and BS about this stuff. This is, you know, like, uh, are digital humans the next step in human computer interaction? Uh, you know, evaluating the safety of edge lane roads. 
Um, Ooh. I know that sounds lame, Blake, but it's actually <laughs> really cool. It sounds pretty cool, actually. It's actually really cool. Hang on. And what's neat is that you can actually click on any of these and check it out. Hey, look, here it is. Here's the safe, you know. Oh, it's an SJF Jew thing. That's cool. Yeah. What? So I've, you know, kind of put all these links here for you. Um, so that way, if you want to keep up with human factors news, you can absolutely click on any of these links. I think it's totally useful. Um, and then we have the second category, which is like, hey, these are totally useful pieces of information. They may be behind a paywall. They may be um, not enough for Blake and I to talk about, but worth mentioning nonetheless. So like, here's all the stuff that, you know, you could take a look at. Like, here's Google's new app automatically organizing your scanned documents. That's kind of a cool human factors approach. You know, it's the actual um, Google blog there. So you can, you know, get to everything nice. right from here. I think it's a totally useful resource and we're trying to be a little bit more useful than just being a talking voice on a microphone every week. I don't know. It's, yeah, you know, and we're, we're doing uh, additional content generation for these too. So you'll notice like the, uh, the automated, wait, what is this? So these, these correlate digital humans, uh, edge lane edge roads lanes. and high bandwidth wireless BCI. So you have these three stories that match up and these stories, the, the top stories, those go to our Patreon. <clears throat> our patrons actually decide which topics we discuss on the show. Um, and thank you to our patrons for selecting this topic tonight. Um, it's something totally cool. And we actually had a uh, issue with ties <laughs> on the Patreon. So we'll, uh, we'll see what's going on with that. Um, trying to figure out how to not make them tie every week. That's like three weeks in a row, isn't it? Yeah. Where we had four way ties. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's hilarious. It's getting better. Um, anyway. Yeah. That's, that's the blog. So we're going to do, um, a a weekly one of these so if you want to keep up with human factors news um check that out uh oh man I, i've done so much stuff with the website i gotta i gotta remind myself so look at over here on the side you see this interview episodes conference coverage i've actually categorized some of our older episodes so now if you go oh, to nice the, you know, this you can come over here and say oh look here's all the interview episodes you can be like oh john lee colin drury um here's all the hfes 2019 we got chris wickens up there um and then i've actually started going through and updating some of our older um as you can see here there's a fancy little artwork there very cool um, and i think i'm just going to do that for the uh for the conference coverage and the interviews i'm not going to do that for every single episode but um, yeah you know you can see like here's micah Inslee. Um, we got some it's kind of nice to put a there. face to some of them. That's cool. Yeah. So, so you can go through there's interviews and then we have conference coverage as well. So if you were to click on that sidebar, I think you can get to it from basically anywhere on the website. Let me see if that's true. Not from here, but, um, yeah, I've put a lot of effort into this website to make it easier to use for the people that are going to use it. Um, and you know, hopefully that means that, uh, you know, they'll be able to find some of this stuff. Oh, hey. actually, that's funny. Yeah, because I don't think I told you this, but I had somebody reach out to me that watched episode 200 from another mentoring community that I work with. Yeah. And I directed them to the website and they found it really helpful because they wanted more stories like the one we did for 200. And I was like, I know a few, but go check out the website. And they really liked the ability to like filter based on keywords, what stories they want or what episodes they could listen to. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty sweet. Pod page for the win. Yeah. I can't wait till we actually have this attached to our domain name. That'll be that'll be really useful. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, you can go check out all these bonus episodes that we have. Like here's Healthcare Symposium 2019, uh, HFESA. Um, so Australia. And then we have so that's the Mateo's episode, right? Yeah. Oh, check this out. It's all connected. I'm telling you, it's all connected. So if you were to go to this HFES Australia. Um, oh, shoot. Did I not do it yet? I didn't do it yet. Hold on. I did it for some, but not all of them. I have it all on my list here. Like if you were to go to the HFES 2020 retrospective, um, you can see down here, I actually have our guests and you can see like, hey, in this episode, you have these people. That's really cool. Um, and if you like what you hear, you can actually click on their name and see what else they're in. So this is kind of going along with the guests. Anyway, I'm nerding out about the website, um, but it's super cool uh, to have all this available. I think it's going to make... Um, our content a little bit more valuable. I think we've just been sitting here talking into a microphone for five years and now we're actually making it useful. Um, and it all starts with this blog. Uh, what time is yeah. it? It's we have, yeah, we got 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Uh, how are we doing on the show notes, Blake? Notes are good. Good. 
Blurb's uh, a little long. I think it's uh, it's kind of necessary for this one. Yeah, there's a lot to cover in there. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Okay, there is... Okay, I, I'm going to pull it came from section right now because there was one that I definitely want to touch on. Um, I feel like... You know, I was going to pull this before the show... Before you and I talked before the show, Blake. And I'm going <laughs> to to pull it afterwards but this is quitting my new job six weeks in how bad is this do i even care <laughs> shoot that's tough oh man i was gonna pull it before anyway uh i'm gonna pull that one <sighs> yeah it's it's from a um let's see here it's that from sounds... a is this uh, is this from the hf world this is from user experience okay um oh yeah we started posting back in reddit again oh you said that to me somewhere you may maybe you shot me a text or something yeah that's awesome because you were saying there was like uh we were getting more traction in some of the hf stuff than normally is there yeah that's um, good bring yeah, that I, sucker back to life or to I life think so. oh by the way blake uh if we talk through that stuff let me help you um Maybe maybe that's another piece that we can do is once mm. those episodes are uploaded, um, we can queue up a response to the, the questioner and you can just post the link to the video. Nice. There we you go. Know what I mean? You know out. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that way it's very targeted and the person gets their answer and we get our content and people get their questions answered all the yep. above. It's I think all it's good. great. Cool. So remind me at the end. Let's let's talk about that. Um, yeah. Okay. We can do that. So I'm going to pull that one because I thought it was a very good one. It's from it's from a uh, a single mom who's a senior designer. So it's it's just I, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see here. Whoa. I'm looking for any other good ones. I kind of flag these as I see them come through. Um. Do do we have a way? This is so stupid. I should know the answer to this. Do we have a way to show some of these videos for our story tonight? Uh, we could. We could I probably don't get want... some DCMA YMCA stuff. We don't need that. Okay, that's, never mind. That's what I'm worried about. Um. Yeah. Anyway, we we have the link. Uh, wait. Do we have the link? No, because we don't have that in our recap yet. <laughs> uh, you know what? We should just post that link in the chat. Can you just post the link in the chat for yep. everyone, Blake? Absolutely. Um, there's a couple uh, videos that accompany tonight's episode that are definitely worth checking out. So uh, it, it kind of helps you with the. Um, I'm going to grab a shortened link because this thing is nasty. So yeah, give me two seconds shortened. chat. Yeah. And you guys will have it shortly. Thanks, Blake. All right. Let me... Copy. Yeah. Cause th this one is definitely worth the videos in my opinion. Oh, yeah. It's so cool. I, I watched them earlier today to remind myself what's going on. It's very cool. Um, there you go, y'all. Story link. Thanks for posting that, Blake. Let's see here. Uh, I'm looking at some of these Reddit posts. I don't know if there's going to be anything worth pulling in. Oh, hey, here's one from the Human Factors sub. Want to keep up with Human Factors news? We're starting a new weekly blog. Oh, that's us. <laughs> yeah, pull that one. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Who are these people? Who are they? Yeah, this is from Human Factors Cast on the Human Factors subreddit. Um, <laughs> one big circle jerk. That's <laughs> yeah, just a giant one. That's hilarious. All right, let's keep on looking here. Help figure out a wish list app. Free statistics course. Okay, human systems engineering. Anyone completed this program at ASU? I can't handle praise from my mentor. I want to take this one. I I one hundred percent of this one because I uh, no. This is one that I definitely wanted to talk about. So we'll pull this one here. Cool. Um, I'm gonna pull maybe one more, and then we'll triage. I like these ones for this show because they're more recent. And if we're going through with the thing that we talked about, which we'll talk about after the show, but if we're going through with that thing, then I want more recent uh, posts. I think that makes more yeah, because then we can actually mm -hmm. have potential of them not being deleted or whatever mm -hmm. and asking them. Yeah, let's see here. Hiring managers, UXer, designers, downgrading a UX job title. Downgrading uh, a UX job title? What does that even mean? Yeah, so they're looking for more remote-friendly positions. Um, ah, I got you. Yeah. 
uh, unpaid part-time remote internship. Don't don't do unpaid internships. That's just free labor uh, for the company. I'm surprised that's even a thing anymore. That's bad. Yeah, it well, it just doesn't make sense. No, right? like people's time is valuable. Oh, like, here, here's another one. Here's another Human Factor subreddit from Human Factors Cast. Hey everyone, we're doing a soft relaunch of our podcast with episode 200. Okay, never mind. <laughs> We got five minutes. Hang on. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to. Oh, how do you explain UX to your Aunt Sally? Do you judge a book oh, by its cover? Yikes. That's hilarious. I have a funny story that I wish I could tell on air, but I cannot. Okay, that's uh, fine. I'll have that's to remember not. that to tell you. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, this might be a good resource. I made a comparison site to explore the best UI UX design tools out there. This might, you know, what, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna pull this up. I don't know if we'll talk about it on the show, but I might post it in our resources. In, um, but see, sleek UI. What is this? Oh, what is this? Is ugly. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a you click on the thing, and it's a video of a website. I don't know what's going on with that. No, we're not. Um, okay. All right, I'm going to go over some of these. We'll pull like three of them. So I want to talk about the quitting my job six weeks in. We'll talk about the recent ones. I can't handle praise for my mentor. Uh, and then we also have... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to like read the subtext of that one. I might have to dip in. Uh, I was like, oh, we got a chat in our Discord. It's just Blake. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for jumping in there, Blake. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what I was, I was picking a third one. All right. Uh, what do you say to a company that doesn't like the fact that you have a side business? That's one that we could pick. Hang on. Yep. Between that one, how do you guys measure your performance or keep track of your metrics? That's another one. How do you handle a user interview with your interviewees? Talk too much. That's a third one that we can take. Yep. Um, entering the field of human factors. Uh, that's a fourth one that we could take. Uh, has anyone changed their UX job title to reflect what their role actually is? That's a that's lower on my list. Yeah. Best resources for improving prototyping skills. That's lower on my list. Yep. Um, I think we talk about the uh, side business. I like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so we have our three. We'll do quitting my new job six weeks in. How bad is this? Do I even care? I can't handle praise from my mentor. And what do you say to a company that doesn't like the fact that you have a side business? Yep, got it. Love it. Cool. All right, so we'll do that. Uh, we're at like four minutes until showtime. If you're here with us live, thank you for for joining us live. I think the uh, the conversation is always more fun when we have folks jumping in um, to comment on some of this stuff. We may bring them into the show. Um, we may not. It might disrupt the flow of the show, but that's okay. We're here. We're watching. We may bring up points that you know <laughs> you bring up. Um, Absolutely, yeah. If you make good points, I will gladly bring them up. Yeah, please uh, do. Just a check in, Nick. Have you checked your audio? Damn, it. like every week. Yes. It's cool. like a, it's like a, it's like clockwork. It's, <laughs> I'm so focused on the video side and the, um, it's easy to do. Yeah. I feel like we had a lot of show and tell this week for our pre show. Yeah. I mean, you went through the, the whole checklist plus a lot of website deep dive. Yeah. Uh, and just to be clear for the pod tonight, we are flipping the script a little bit. News first. Yes, yes, that okay. is true. Um, yeah, for everyone, uh, we'll we'll explain this in a couple minutes here, but we're uh, we're repositioning the banter to the end of it. We're going to call it one more thing. It's it's a way to get into the news quicker. Um, I've left all these episode two hundred notes in here, Blake, just in case we need to reference them. Um, but you know. Yeah, there's one like uh, one resource that I wanted to share in my banter, and that's really all I need from last week. It's down at the bottom. Uh, cool. I've I've in the show notes. I've kind of created the one more thing section right after the Reddit, so it's Sick. there. Awesome, that's perfect. Um, so yeah, with that, uh, dear, we're fifty eight. All right, uh, I think we're gonna take about a minute. Uh, and Blake, why don't we record at 30 on the countdown? Okay. So everyone stick around. We're just going to take a minute to breathe and grab something to drink. And then uh, we'll be back with the actual show. So uh, thanks for sticking around. We'll be right back one minute.
Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. It is episode 201. Uh, we're recording this live on April 8th, 2021. Uh, I'm your host, Nick Rome, and I'm joined by my good friend and yours, Mr. Blake Arnstorf. Yes. How are you doing, Nick? Blake, I'm good. Uh, I got some programming notes to go over. Just a quick community update. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to episode 200. That was a ton of fun to hear from everyone. Uh, and our numbers kind of definitely show that we had a lot of visibility on that episode. So thank you to everyone who watched that. Um, and if you're new to the show, thank you for hanging out with us. I'm um, happy to have you. Uh, you know, we've, um, I do want to say that we've kind of uh, just a quick little community update. Uh, we've updated our events page in our Slack and Discord to include all major United States West cities. Uh, and we're going to slowly add to that over time. So it's kind of populating some of these uh, meetups from the United States West. And we're going to work on United States East next. So everything uh, west of Colorado we're, uh, you know, is all in kind of one feed. So you can kind of see what's going on. Um, so check us out on Slack and Discord. We're, it's a valuable resource for you all. But I don't want to waste too much time. One thing that we didn't mention last week's episode is that we're actually going to move the banter to the end of the show. We know what you're here for. You're here for the Human Factors news. We're not going to keep that from you. So why don't we go ahead and get into it? That's right. This part of the show is all about Human Factors news. This is where we talk about everything related to the field of Human Factors. This could be anything uh, from medical, privacy, security, robotics, AI. Whatever it is, as long as it relates to the field of human factors, it is fair game for us to sit here and talk about. What do we have up this week? We're kind of touching on a lot of different aspects, but this comes from Facebook Reality Labs research this week. So it, they're actually building an augmented reality that won't actually force users to choose between interacting with devices or the real world around you. So rather than dragging your attention away to peripheral devices like what we have with our mobile phones, AR glasses will change the world around you, making people kind of the center of the computing experience. The future of HCI definitely depends on an exceptionally easy to use and reliable as well as private interface that lets us remain completely present in the real world at all times while also being able to experience what's augmented. Glasses are really cool and that will likely be a driving force of augmented reality's future. But there's also another opportunity and that comes from the wrist. So the wrist is a traditional place where we wear watches, uh, Fitbits, any of that kind of stuff, meaning it could reasonably fit into your everyday life and be acceptable in even social contexts. It's a comfortable location to wear wearables all day, and it's located right next to primary instruments you would use to interact with the world in augmented reality, your own hands. So the proximity here would allow us to bring rich control capabilities of AR into your hands, enable with a com combination with glasses, enabling much more intuitive, powerful, and even satisfying interactions. So Facebook believes that their wristband wearables may offer a path to low, ultra low friction, always available inputs for AR glasses. But it's not a complete, complete solution at the moment, but it's a work in progress. So Nick, this is something I haven't really thought about with AR or if it gets put into glasses. The fact that you have to kind of have a medium that the glasses can interact with so that you can manipulate your own physical world that you're dealing with. Yeah, let's talk a brief brief history of augmented reality, where it is now, and what the interaction methods are now. Uh, so think about augmented reality. This is a, a virtual overlay of the environment in which you're in. So if you were looking at a wall, you might be able to project something like a calendar on that wall. If you were to look at uh, an object in the physical world that might give you additional details about what this is. Like I'm holding a duct tape right now. This might actually tell me that what I'm looking at is a uh, gorilla brand duct tape, not sponsored on this episode. Uh, but you know, it, it might tell me additional information about it. Likewise, I might hold up a device that is able to be interacted with. So like, let's say I walk up to a lamp in my uh, home, or if I look up to a light source, I may be able to modify that. Now, the way that we interact with this stuff now, or at least up until this point, is there's, uh, well, it, it's weird because there's um, there are several different technologies out there, but the ones that I'm most familiar with are uh, kind of these onboard cameras on the augmented reality devices themselves that monitor where your hand placement is in relation to the environment 
and you might be able to control something by reaching out and touching a virtual object with your finger and there's tracking built into the device that you're using. Um, there's also uh, a keyboard and mouse, which is a traditional uh, interface that you use to interact with some of these um, elements in a virtual space. And it's a little weird to think about that conceptually. Like if you were to wear a pair of augmented reality glasses and you were to move a mouse up off your computer and onto your wall to interact with that calendar, right? That's one example. Gotcha. Now, let's talk about Facebook, what they're doing here. We're looking at a wrist device that measures EMG, uh, EEG, is it EMG? EMG, EMG. you're right. It's, it's looking at EMG um, and it is offering this wrist mounted wearable as, a, as an additional method of interacting with your environment. So now if you were to walk up to that lamp, that same lamp, there might be an interface, but now it's tracking my intent through the use of this wearable. So if I go up to it and I press my wrist down, or if I push my finger down, it the, the device will presumably pick that up, present me with haptic feedback built into the device, and give me that sensation that yes, I have clicked that object and I can slide down the brightness, I can turn it on, turn it off, change the color, all that stuff. And there's a video on this article that you can go and check out. And if you're listening to this, I highly recommend going and looking at this article as we talk about it in tandem, because there's going to be a lot of these concepts that we're talking about that are uh, easier to show than they are to describe with words. We'll try our best here on the show. Um, but I think that's a pretty good recap of where we're at with AR and how we interact with it and kind of what this thing is at, at the base level. I also wanted to ask you, Nick, because you're you're so much more plugged into anything virtual reality or augmented reality. So I, I want to ask potentially a layman's question, but what I consider so something I don't know. So they talk a good bit about in the beginning of this article that the kind of new the modes of interaction right now have to do with your phone. So is things like you know being able to use an Ikea app that allows you to manipulate furniture in your house and project it on your space or like stuff like Pokemon Go. Is that also considered augmented reality? Yeah, good point of clarification there. So I was talking specifically about it, about like a head mounted augmented sure. reality display. There are other augmented reality tools that you can use. Mobile is a big part of this right now. You can uh, visualize 3D objects in your own personal space. You can uh, like you said, Ikea, you can put a new couch in your space and see how that might fit based on the um, the dimensions of your own household. Now, there are, you know, there's Pokemon Go, which overlays uh, a virtual Pokemon on top of the environment in which you're in. Um, and there's actually a really cool article from Niantic. They're actually building some AR glasses so you can actually see the Pokemon. And it's it's pretty oh, cool. That's wild. Um, so uh, they teased it. There's no actual news yet. So we might actually have that in our uh, news at some point, but uh, we'll see where we go. Um, yes, that is all included in augmented reality when you think about the umbrella of mixed reality, just X reality, whatever it is, right? Yeah, augmented, gotcha. mixed, virtual. Uh, so that's that's a part of it. Very cool. Yeah. So I mean, the transition away from like just the phone experience, right? Because although it, it's cool, it's interesting, it's something you keep in your pocket and you always have, like, I, I totally get Facebook's perspective and their kind of like long thinking or long term game here of, well, we're, we know we, Facebook, are going to try and integrate it into glasses, assuming there's definitely other companies that have tried this and have not perfected it yet. We've talked about them on the show a couple of times. Um, but how are we going to allow people to still interact with the world around them in meaningful ways without losing context? So I think it's it does show a lot of really intensive and thoughtful research on Facebook's part to think about like, well, OK, what's most natural? Probably using your hands. And how do we allow people to do that? And so this this idea of sticking something on your wrist as a wearable that in in the videos or in any of the images you see might look pretty big like bracelets and almost could be clunky but i could imagine over time this stuff gets you know whittled down to a band kind of like how fitbits originally started yeah it does look clunky right now um however if you think about the alternative of interacting with things in your environment that are uh i, I don't know if you're if you think about you know using a keyboard and mouse wherever you're at if you think about using a um sort of that that 
other methodology that I told where you have, you know, the, the camera mounted on your head mounted display that reads your, um, your finger placement in the virtual environment. It's not always a perfect mapping and it might be yeah. a little weird to use. You don't get that haptic feedback. Um, so this, this makes sense from that perspective, right? You're, you're using your hands to interact with augmented, uh, objects in your environment. Um, and uh, so can, can we talk about this device? Just this, let's just talk yeah. about how this thing works. Right. So, um, like we mentioned, it's, uh, it, it's using EMG and, um, basically what that means is that, uh, you are, there's a signal that comes from your brain that goes to your hand that communicates the intent that you want your hand to perform. Um, and what this device does is it reads that intent as it goes to your hand and translates that into some command for you to interact with a virtual environment or an augmented reality, uh, augmented environment in this case. Um, and so if you were to, you know, hold out your wrist in front of you and, uh, stick out your pointer finger and click with it, you know, that, that, small level of detail could be measured by this device. Um, and so you also have things like positional tracking. So it would know where your hand is in relation to the 3D space. And so if you communicate both the uh, position of your hand and the intent of your interaction, i.e. a finger click, then it can determine where exactly you are intending to click in that virtual environment. Um, so that's kind of at, at a base level, how this goes, we're not going to get into the science of EMG, but you can imagine that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of cool technology that goes into reading your intent and, uh, you know, using a computer to algorithm to understand exactly where you're at. We're talking about the computer or the human computer inter interaction side of things here and what this might mean, um, you know, as it relates to how you interact with these environments now. Um, so, I, I mean, they, they mention a couple things in their art, uh, their article here about like controlling virtual objects. You can like grab stuff and move it, um, with your hand, uh, using this device. You can do like a, a typing on your own personal keyboard, which I have a little bit of issue with because there's the haptic feedback is weird. And if you look at the demo, it's very janky. There's like, <laughs> there's some, um, there's some magic going on there, I think, behind the scenes. If you look at the video, they're they're clearly typing, and there's like some computer algorithm behind the scene that's like correcting it for them, um, because it's like, oh, this could have been, you know, J or K, but I'm not quite sure, so I'm just gonna put both down, and then as the word it out. gets typed out, it kind of changes. So it's a little janky to me. Um, you know, we're also talking about um, different types of interaction, like they use this. Uh, they use this bow and arrow example of how, you know, there might be a complex interaction where you're using both of your hands to do something. Um, you can imagine that there's a lot of different possibilities with this, but that's just kind of a preview of what they're intending this thing to be used with. Yeah, and I guess like one thing I was questioning, because it's it's it, it's really mind blowing to me because like measuring EMGs or EMG has been around for a long, long time, using a lot of different applications before, but like the fact that this is now a able to measure something at such a much finer grain of detail that you can catch those signals fast enough to kind of understand that even at like a finger touch, that's where somebody's meaning something to be. Uh, but the part that I always kind of go back to, I don't know if it's because I've spent too much time dealing with input devices in my thesis work or in my research work, I guess, but I immediately wondered like, okay, great. So the it's more seamless to interact with your environment, but how does that actually feel in addition to the visual perception that you're changing things? And so it looks like part of the reason I'm imagining that these wrist wearables are so big is they have looks like they have like tubes all the way around the size, like a really big chain link wristwatch. And that is part of the haptic feedback system that is able to kind of correct you or give you a little bit more about what's going on in the environment. I think they I think the prototype is actually called the tactical squeeze bracelet interface. So these little vibro tactile vibro tactical. Uh, actuators are all around your wrist and kind of give you a little bit of extra feedback in terms of what's going on in the environment. So, I mean, it's really cool, but it does like in the videos kind of show you that it's still an early prototype stage. There's a lot to kind of figure out in terms of probably the glasses themselves, but also the interfaces with the real world. 
Yeah. So let's talk briefly about that haptic interface that you mentioned, right? So now, instead of, like I said, you know, traditionally the experience has been uh, minimal feedback, I would say. Um, you know, if you're looking at it through your phone, you might get a, a vibration on your phone, but it doesn't give you direction. You might get, um, you know, a vibration on your head if you're looking at a, you know, if there's some vibration mechanism in your HMD, uh, but then it kind of vibrates your vision and maybe makes things a little squiggly. There's there's issues with the way it is now. So by providing that haptic feedback on um, these wrist mounted devices, now you're actually kind of localizing it to the hands which are interacting with this environment. So one example that they use here is kind of this bow and arrow um, where you imagine if you were to um, cock a bow and arrow, right? As you pull it back, um, basically what happens on these devices is it is it gives you the sensation that it's tightening around your wrist, that um, as you pull back this virtual bow and arrow, you are, you know, it, it's giving you more and more haptic feedback to give you that you are, that sense of tension in the string. Um, and, you know, as you let go, all that tension goes away. And so they are using some clever um, haptic feedback to kind of communicate what's going on. I'd imagine a click is very easy to simulate. You know, you just give a click, uh, a, a vibration maybe on the bottom of the race bracelet to make you feel like you just clicked an object. Um, or there might be even, I don't know if they mentioned this in the article. It's been a while since I read it. Admittedly, we found this last week. So, you know, if if there's um, some uh, way of providing a sensation of if you're going to, if you're if you're getting near a virtual object too, right? Like, let's say, let's say there is some object in the virtual space, and as you're nearing it, it might give you some proximity, um, haptic feedback to let you know that you're close to that, you know. Uh, Object. So as you get closer, it might vibrate a little harder. As you move away, it might vibrate a little less. Um, and there are some really interesting things going on with haptic technology right now. You know, you see this in the PlayStation 5 controller, um, where there's more advanced ways to give you specific uh, haptic feedback than just the rotational motors of the past. Right? There's there's some really advanced ways in which you can. Um, get that haptic feedback now, and it's actually very specific, and can you can do some really interesting things. I highly recommend anyone go check out what's going on with the PlayStation Five triggers um, for more on that. But you know, just just leave it uh, leave it to say suffice to say that there's some really cool interaction methods that you can do with some of that haptic feedback, and I think what they're doing here um, is is actually really cool, right? I mean, you can imagine there's a a whole set of research questions that you can ask and answer about what haptic feedback is appropriate for interacting with augmented objects. That's cool, yeah, man. I mean, there's even <laughs> like, uh, it's it's kind of an interesting UX design space as well, because it gives you a way to understand what, what's the impact of somebody interacting in this space. How immersive does it actually feel? I mean, some of the the stuff that they show on the website if anybody's watched the videos you'll you'll notice that some of it's kind of like cartoonish um, but what if this is a much more realistic world environment how do you keep that immersion going and I'm, a lot of it's probably going to be between you know some in some degrees i would imagine some sound design what's the visual doing but also on top of that how haptics are interacting with you in a way that you know, makes you feel like it's a normal experience because like Nick was describing, there may be instances where you're kind of having to augment the world. That's so silly to say in this context, but you're, you're almost augmenting a typical experience to feel like it. It's uh, like you're getting closer to an object, like in the real world, like I've got an amp to the right of me. I don't vibrate or get, you know, any haptic feedback as I move closer to it. I only get tactile feedback when I actually touch it. So it's, it's kind of bridging that gap to create those more immersive experiences through a combination of what we experience in the normal world, but also using different mediums like haptics to make something feel more realistic or make it feel real at all. Yeah, let's talk about kind of the, um, the, the, the what I would consider the weird part of this. Um, you, you talk about haptics and making it feel a little bit more normal. They They talk briefly about the social haptics bit of this, right? So they also suggest that haptics on these devices might actually be able to convey emotion. Um, and, and they actually are calling these haptic emojis. 
<laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, it, it, they, they go on to say, you know, if you're in the right context, a different type of haptic feedback could correspond to popular emojis, and it could be a different way to uh, interact socially. Um, and so that this this getting into the weird territory, like what does a haptic emoji feel like? You know, like I, it's so conceptually far from what we're uh, what we have right now, at least in my mind. Right. I, I think of a of emoji like what does a 100 percent emoji sound feel like? Right. Like <laughs> <laughs> full vibration. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, how do you communicate emotion through haptics? Now, I, I don't doubt that it's possible because that's in some ways, it's not the same as what I was describing and what I described was poor, but like the, the environment that you're going to have to create is going to be fundamentally different because you're using different things to create objects and to make them seem real. So something like giving off haptic emojis or haptic emotions, it, it sounds really far out there, but I could imagine it being, you know, something that will happen and looks like they're already looking into how that's going to be in the real world and allow you to interact socially with each other. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's almost, it's funny because when I think of emotions, maybe it's just the psychology in me, I think of color more so than anything else and visual perception. So what that means in a, you know, vibrate vibratory action. I have no idea. But like when you said 100, that just made me th feel like that it's a lot of vibration. I don't know. Uh, but it'll yeah. be cool to see how that evolves. It will be cool to see how that um, kind of comes into play here. And I, I do want to mention, so they, we're, we're talking about these research threads right now. There's, they have several different prototypes to kind of um, get at these different research threads. Like they have one prototype for uh, the, um, I think it's for the emojis, right? They have this bellow band, which uses air uh, within the bellows and can be controlled to render pressure and vibration. Uh, and these complex patterns of space and time. Um, and then they have another prototype called TASB, which is short for tactical and squeeze bracelet interface. And this is using vibro tactile actuators um, uh, and a novel wrist squeeze mechanism. So they're using different, um, they're testing different ways of, of this haptic feedback. So this is, this haptic feedback is something that they're really, really focusing on. Um, you know, I will, uh, we'll end this, I think, with with kind of this last point here with uh, privacy and security um, as it and safety as it relates to these research questions, right? Now, they do address this because you can imagine um, sort of there's, there's some, uh, th there can be ethical issues as you start to look at some society level engagement with this stuff, right? They, uh, you know, it, there may be some adverse consequences for using this type of technology. Let's leave it that way. And so they, they are considering this in their um, their research, I guess. And and this is kind of as a basis is what they say. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so privacy, security, and safety must be considered fundamental research questions that underlie all of our explorations and risk-based interaction. This is coming from Facebook. I have a complicated uh, opinion on Facebook and uh, privacy, security, and safety are not three words that I think of when it comes to Facebook, but it's something that they specifically call out in relation to this research. I don't doubt that these researchers have bad intent. I just think that you know, when you're talking about big mega corporations, it, it gets a little... Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Well, I, Difficult. I mean, <laughs> we've seen it in the past too, and it's, it's one of those things where you've seen like ex Facebook's executives come out and be questioning the thing that they created. So it's it's good to see that hopefully there is actual like ethics committees that are really kind of taking a hold of how Facebook is from the research funding is approaching these problems. It seems like it in this article they do, you know, have a fair chunk about a couple of different, you know, sectors within Facebook that f function and think about the eth ethics in AR, the ethics in you know, taking control of people's like neuroplasticity to be able to understand mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So it's it's good. Um, and it's coming from an institution that we know in the past, we have probably have all questioned at some point or another what they're doing in terms of privacy and security. Um, and I, I have to say to their credit, I let or whoever that is really like spearheading this article, uh, that they they are really thinking about some of the bigger problems. Then you mentioned privacy and security, and I think safety becomes a big one when you create mm -hmm. this augmented world because, like, 
like Pokemon Go is the example I go to, but I remember a lot, a lot of people kind of getting themselves in precarious situations, not paying attention to the world around them <laughs> while they were point, yeah. <laughs> walking while over train interact- tracks and, uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. Or like I watched somebody walk into a stop sign one time, but it's, it's like this kind of stuff. You have to figure out where the, the line in the real world, like bridges that gap so that we are not creating like safety issues for people that are interacting in augmented worlds while they're out and about with other people in a social setting or whatever it may be. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it with one last point here. They, they say they collaborate with academic ethicists uh, to help the industry as a whole address issues and our embedded ethicists within our team help guide us as we address considerations like data management. So that's another kind of important issue. All right. I think I think we're good on that story. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Facebook for our story this week. It was a it was a pretty good one, I think. Um, and, and thank you to our patrons for selecting the topic this week. Um, you know, if you want to follow along, uh, we have an interesting way you can do that now. But we do post all of them in our Slack and Discord as we find them. So join us over there for our discussion. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, we'll see what's going on in the Human Factors community. Back after this. All right, and we're back. I just want to do a huge thank you, as always, to our patrons and especially our honorary Human Factors cast staff, Michelle Tripp. Patrons like you keep the show running. Thank you all so much for your continued support. Uh, I do want to mention a new thing that we're doing over on our website. We are now doing a Human Factors News Roundup. Uh, This is a a new thing that we're kind of um, spearheading. This is so what we've done in the past, Blake, is we've just kind of found the news articles and we posted them in our Slack. And this kind of came because I was trying to manage. Uh, we have now our Slack and our Discord. And um, we are kind of trying to link the two together. So that way, anything that's posted in one gets posted in the other. And kind of our, our shorthand uh, solution is... Um, is, is this Human Factors News Roundup. So if you if you follow us on any of our social channels, we've actually posted this across those. Um, and basically what it is, is it's a blog post on our website where we consolidate all the information that I find during my office hours on Twitch. You can find me Tuesday. Um, finding those news stories and we've linked them all for you. They're conveniently all in one place for you. So if you are interested in following Human Factors News for all the things that don't make the show or things that our patrons get to vote on uh, to select the news story, um, check that out. It's something I think that, you know, we've just been doing anyway. Um, and now it's a way to kind of package it up and and give it back to the Human Factors community. We're trying to be more than just mouthpieces on a podcast every week. We're trying to give back to the community. Uh, speaking of the community, let's go ahead and get into this next part of the show. That's right. It came from Reddit. This is the part of the show where we search all over the internet to bring you topics the community is talking about. Any uh, topic is fair game as long as it relates to the field of, you guessed it, human factors. Now, we have a couple of these this week. um, And uh, some of these are pretty interesting. I I really like these uh, stories that we've these these Reddit posts, <laughs> <laughs> these stories these, we've gathered are not from story. Reddit. I mean, I guess some of them are stories. Uh, some of them have some stories they're told here for sure. Yeah, let me see. So our first one here, um, my computer's chugging. Give me one sec. Uh, so this one here, uh, this one is from Glitchy ninety or sorry, Glitchy nine one one. 
on the user experience subreddit. They go on to write, quitting my job six weeks in. How bad is this? Do I even care? Um, hey guys, I'm exhausted. I'm a senior designer and a single mom. I've worked for everything. I've worked for everything from agencies to Fang to high growth startups. I'm at a startup right now. I've never worked this hard in my life, and I'm a workaholic who loves design. I'm pulling 12 hour day minimums, and more common is working from around 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., taking a little break and then working on, until 2 a.m. or so. Uh, I've tried everything, talking to them. They literally laughed when I told them how many hours I was working. They love this culture and work very hard to make it this way. This is all on purpose. Waiting for new leadership. We brought in a new head of product who has a laughable four experience as a PM. I see level, not even senior PM. He's just communicate. He's committed to us a, a year's worth of work for the next quarter when we're already underwater and a half a quarter behind. Just not working more than eight hours. We missed our deadlines and got yelled at for being the world's slowest design team. And the CEO has been, quote, pissed at us every uh, every day since. The only thing I can think of to do here is leave at this point. We've been set up to fail for Q2. I directly told them that even if every designer at the company worked for 24 hours straight on the project for all of Q2, it would still only be halfway done. The answer is always, guys, come on. We got to be aggressive here. I'm at the point where I'm angry. I hate the company. I hate the work now. I hate the leadership. I have no life and barely interact with my son anymore. They pay a lot but that's just numbers in the bank after I reached my, after I reached mid 100s. Okay, good flex. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, so now I'm interviewing and actively looking. I'm terrified of getting stuck in a sim similar role after this. I'm trying to tell myself there's no way these more established companies work like this, but there was uh, no sign of this culture in the interview process. Also, it's going to be really awkward to quit after six weeks when the CEO is my direct boss, but I literally don't know what else to do. This is the nightmare job I've always been afraid of in tech, but luckily never encountered before. Blake, what should this? What should Glitchy Nine One One do? Welcome this to is intense. I don't know. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, welcome to startups, though. I mean, they can. It just depends on what you walk into, and I, I don't know. This person's a senior designer, so they're they're ten tiers above me. I mean, especially on the flex on the salary. Uh, but let's let's try and contextualize this into some meaningful stuff that you could think here. One thing I am a little bit confused by is they mention loving, you know, loving being, loving being a designer and already being a workaholic, but this particular, like either because of culture can't like get a good design team together, no leadership, like that's even working against them. So that's just a bad sign. And then when it's getting in, in an inner, when it's interfering with your life and you're a workaholic and you have like children, like this whole thing of not being able to, you know, interact with their son the same way and being a single mom, that just, that can't be okay for you. I can't imagine that that feels all right at the end of the day. So I, and if, if you've gotten to the point of anger, like, trust me, I've been in a startup before. I've gotten to the angry place. It's it's time to go. And it seems like you must have a lot of talent it, because you've, you've mentioned you've worked in Fang. You've worked in other high growth startups. So maybe this is just one in the bad batch and it sounded good. The biggest thing to do is like continue interviewing. I, 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 uh, let's, let's see here. So don't just quit the job and walk away from it. I think that's a bad move at this point, unless you just have so much saved and you don't really need to worry about, you know, living for the next year. I would just keep interviewing and find your next position with the biggest caveat being like, even if you get into another startup, do a lot more research and interviewing of the company. Because if you're, if you walk into another startup, it's at the same level at same starting place, same series funding, you could just end up in the same situation if you're not kind of being cognizant of who you're going to end up working for, what the experience is like, getting a good sense of the CEO and stuff like that. Because that's, I mean, it seems like you've got the talent, you have the experience. It's just not really great leadership. Can't kind of get a good design team up under you guys. Um, so just keep interviewing, keep pushing forward. I don't know, Nick, what, what kind of approach would you take to something like this? This is awful. I hate this. <laughs> I hate yeah, this. I feel bad. so bad for this person. I mean, especially as a single mom, like uh, I, I can't get that. I, I'm a parent 
um, you know, with with a partner who's able to uh, look after the boy when I'm busy and, you know, vice versa. And so um, I think Blake's absolutely right here. Do what's right for you. Um, and I think you're already at the conclusion that you understand that this is not right for you. Yeah, this is this is crazy. Um, I can't imagine uh, working 12 hour day minimums. Um, and even more common than 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. That's insane. That's, That's insane. So crazy. You know, I think there's there's a couple things going on here right now, right? There's this is six weeks in. I would almost look for a company that allows you to work remotely, if that's possible, if that's something that you enjoy, um, for a couple of reasons. One, you can get away with a lot less salary than you're working with now, and you can live wherever you like. Um, if it is just numbers in the bank to you, like Blake said, if you have the money saved up, quit now, get out. Don't give yourself that stress. That's a lot. Um, that's a lot to deal with. And, uh, I, I just, I, I can't imagine working in this environment for long without burning out entirely. Like, um, you know, if you're, if you're in this environment where you're actually just not loving it anymore, then why are you even there? Why are why are you doing that thing? Um, just find something else that you might enjoy better or gives you a better work life balance between the work that you're doing and the work that you're expected to do. And, um, you know, the, the, commitment to your family that you need. Um, you know, that's, I think Blake kind of hit the nail on the head here. If you're, if you're talking to a company, you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. And so, um, you know, it's kind of hard to get a sense of culture of a company from the outside looking in, but those are types of questions that you could ask during that interview process. And certainly, um, you know, I would, I would describe this experience in every interview that you have and say, this is not what I want. Um, what's your, you know, kind of work-life balance like here. Yeah. Um, and if, if you get any weird vibes, maybe don't pursue it. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, the so one thing that I'm just noticing and I caught like, just in case somebody's listening to this or when we cut this up and put it on YouTube or wherever else we put it, like if you find yourself being angry and you hate the company, ask yourself, okay, I, I hate the company do I love the product and do I believe in the product? Cause you can change company culture. If you hate leadership in this startup world that turns over and often changes a lot. That's just the nature of, you know, early stage startups or high growth startups. But if you ever find yourself hating the work, that's where I think there's a really big problem because you can't, you can't fix that for anybody but yourself. And if you're just, at the point where you don't you don't want to do human factors, you don't want to do user experience design, you don't want to be a software developer, you've really got to take a step back and either take a pause in your career life or definitely be diving really deep into finding something else to do or something else that will bring that meaning back into the stuff that you used to like doing and you enjoyed before. So that's like that's a really big takeaway here. Um, Nick is totally right. This seems like a a pretty terrible situation. I think it's more common than not in some early stage startups, but regardless, you seem talented. Go find something else better to do with your time. Get out while you can. All right, let's get into this next one here. Uh, this one is from Neon Lights on the user experience subreddit. I can't handle praise from my mentor. I love this name. Uh, so this is, uh, let's see here. My company CEO told me, or six months ago, my company CEO told me I needed to find a design mentor. So I'm the highest level designer at my company, and he wants me to lead design innovation. Uh, I ended up finding a mentor who I really respected, spent 10 plus years in the field, and has worked at the biggest design-driven companies. He thankfully, or very thankfully to have him, first of all, I feel so awkward with him because I get very anxious and nervous, and I find it hard to have a natural conversation because of that. Secondly, I ask him for a lot of advice, and I show him what we're working on at the company from a design viewpoint. And after a few months now of him mentoring me, he's been giving me very high praises. This might sound silly, but I'm finding it hard to cope with these praises as I've never really been praised this highly before. I feel a lot of energetic anxiety because of it, and I can't say I like the feeling. I'm just curious if anyone else has felt this way 
they are going through their creative development. Blake, have you? How do you handle praise? And is it something that uh, we should be um, dubious of? Is it, how do you handle praise? Uh, uh, praise. This this is a hard one. I did, I should have paid more attention and thought about this a little bit harder. Um, I don't handle praise well. Like I I can totally sympathize with whatever this person's saying. I mean, just we, I talked about this a little bit earlier on the po- or, or before we even started recording. So I had a couple of colleagues reach out to me about the episode 200 of the podcast, and like I couldn't even really be more. I I don't know. My first go to is like this is Nick's show, right? that he, he did all the work. I'm just kind of hanging out. And so I can't, I'm not very good at taking praise. And I think it's something that people really, if they have a problem like myself, you need to kind of be okay and take the praise, take a second to be okay with the fact that you've done something good before you just jet on to the next thing. Cause I, I think that can, that can wind you up in these kind of tough spots where you've never taken a, a second to say like, Oh, that worked out really well. I'm glad that I was doing this. Any of that kind of stuff, because you'll get caught up in just the bad moments all the time. Also, I would. So I've I've worked with a lot of people over the past two years through Design Lab, both with the company as a design mentor, outside of the company after like the company or after students like finish the program for career development and stuff like that. And so I know what it's like, and I'm not I'm not saying I am some great senior designer, but I can see it in other people when they feel nervous to talk to me about things. And I think the best way to get around that, if you're feeling that with a mentor, is to be honest with them that you feel that way. And it'll probably give you a different level of relationship with that person. Um, and it will also, if it's if it's so like in this case, causing you some kind of serious and energetic anxiety. It's good for somebody else to know that so that they will tailor what they're kind of spending their time focusing on. Um, Sounds like you just do really good work and you need to be okay with the fact that you're good at your job and you have an awesome design mentor who has really good experience and is saying that to you. But I think just be very open with the person you're working with so that they can understand and not cause you overly a bunch of this energetic anxiety. Um, But Nick, I mean, how do you deal with like praise or anybody kind of giving you, you know, a lot of attaboys or any of that stuff. I, I deflect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I deflect. I, I mean, look, here's the thing. Um, I'm doing it now. You say this is my show. Blake, this show wouldn't be what it is without you either. Um, and, and, you know, I think one thing that we all have to consider is this little thing called imposter syndrome. And it's very easy to feel that where you're not quite sure the thing that you're doing um, you're not quite sure you're worthy of the thing that you're doing. And, um, I get the sense that that's going on a little bit here. Blake brought up some really good points. Um, let's, let's talk about them. One, an effective mentor mentee, uh, relationship revolves around communication. And if you are not okay with praise or find it awkward to receive that praise, let your mentor know that honesty will pay off. And if they're a good mentor, they will adjust the way that they address your work. They might say, uh, they might approach things slightly more critically um, and provide a little bit more actionable feedback uh, on some of the nitpicky aspects of it, if that would make you feel better about it. Um, There are ways to give backhanded compliments, if you will, Uh, in a mentor-mentee relationship that still provides feedback, but also mostly tells somebody that they're on the right path. Um, This is a weird question because uh, I I know a lot of people who don't take praise well. Um, And, and, uh, you know, I think both of us here on the show are included in that, right? Like you said it yourself, you, you got praise for last, last, last week's episode. And, um, I, I did too. And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, look, like it, it we're just doing the thing that we do. Um, it, it, it's almost like it's expected. And so don't praise us cause we're just doing the thing. Uh, I, I don't know. I struggle with this one too, personally. Um, and the best thing we can do is kind of communicate with our mentor and say, Hey, I, I don't, can you phrase it a different way? Um, yeah, it's super important. And, and, and when you do get that awkward, you know, kind of compliment, then, then that's when you bring it up to them. Like say, Hey, look, like that's really nice of you to say. Um, I don't necessarily feel that. 
Um, I feel like this is just part of the job. And uh, I, I'm looking for actionable feedback here. I'm not looking for praise. Uh, and so, you know, anything, even nitpicks, that, that would be appreciated. And so kind of outlining exactly what you're looking for uh, instead of praise, I think might be a, a way to go. Um, yeah. Anything else to add to that one, Blake? I no, I think that's actually a perfect script too, because that's enough to be very pointed about the fact that like you're here for a specific purpose. You're not really looking for anything beyond that. Um, and then it'll it'll probably have your mentor shift their focus and be like, they will tell you still good work. Here's some things you could think about looking at or you should consider versus like long winded praise. I don't yeah. know if this person hears this, just be stoked that you have some mentor that is this renowned. It sounds like, um, and they will definitely take the feedback and roll it into how they're talking to you for sure. I'm, Cause I'm sure this is not the first time they've had to do that. Yeah. All right. Let's go through one more of these. This is uh, from caters on the user experience subreddit. What would you say to a company that doesn't like the fact that you have a side business? Uh, I was interviewing with a company this morning and I mentioned the fact that I have a side business as well. The head of design stated ask, or started asking me lots of questions about it. At first, I thought she was just interested in my business, but then she went like, quote, I can see you. You're very enthusiastic about this project. I don't understand why you would want to work with us then. Uh, duh, of course, I'm enthusiastic about it. It's my side business. I explained her that I only work on my side business during my free time and that it's actually not my full time gig. And she said, quote, well, I personally work a lot in this company. I wouldn't have the time to handle a side business. And so I told her, sure, uh, but I'm assuming you work Monday to Friday, right? And she said, yes. And I was like, good. OK, this is <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, is a conversation. A story. <laughs> good. So you're free on the weekends. That's when I would work on my side business for a few hours. She didn't know what to say and laughed it off. Uh, to be honest, she mentioned the fact that uh, she works in the evenings as most of the times, uh, which is probably a big red flag. So I think I might ditch this company anyway. But my question is, why does she react that way? Maybe because she thinks I'm not going to put 100% into their business, uh, even though I told her countless times that I only work on my side business during my free time. I've talked about my side businesses to lots of other companies, um, and they were all very happy about it. They always asked me interesting questions, and they were also very happy about the fact that I was so enthusiastic about building products. I actually think it has been one of my strongest selling points when interviewing with companies. Uh, creating and handling a business requires a lot of skills that most designers or human factors practitioners don't have. It also shows that you're always working on something interesting and that you like putting yourself in challenging situations. I was about to say to her, but I didn't. Look, it seems like this is a cause of concern for you. If me having a business is a problem, maybe I'm not the right fit for this job and you should hire someone who doesn't do anything else besides working for you. Blake, do you have a side gig? And how does your employer react to it? I and a, what would you do in this case? <laughs> yeah, so this is really a cool one. And I'm, I'm glad the narrative's in here too. Uh, because it, although this was not the question, right? This goes back to being really cognizant of who you are and what you like to do and not being able, not being afraid to kind of show that off in interviews. Because I think this tactic of talking about the side business actually told you that you don't want to work for this company because of the reaction. And you on a side note for your side business, learned a little bit about the company culture and the fact that somebody told you one thing, but wasn't honest in the first round of how often do they work? Do they work Monday through Friday? Do they work a normal schedule? You found out a lot from just this one thing that's all about you. Um, so the, the side business thing can be hard, right? So you have to be willing to have a conversation about it. If it ends up in something like this, where it puts you in an awkward situation, I don't think I would have tackled it the way that you it. And actually, I'm glad that you tackled it the way you did. I don't think I would have gone as far to say, like, I don't know that I'm the right fit for somebody that only works for this company, I would have just said, you know, if this is concerning, we should have a conversation further about it if I'm a likely candidate or something like that. But ultimately, if the company's not willing to have a conversation or understand what you're doing and the hours that you're doing it, then you you probably just don't want to be there. Um, ultimately, for me, uh, teaching was much more of my passion. And I kind of, I knew that before I ever got into human factors and it's just something I never pursued. So I fell into actually getting two jobs at once by accident. 
I didn't mean to be working two jobs at the same time. I applied for one and then got an offer for another and they just coincided. Um, the Basically, the way that I handled it is I just made the company aware before I came in that, hey, I have this job. I know there are other people at the company that have similar positions. Um, these are the hours that are associated with it. And if it's a problem, we need to have the discussion now before everything gets started and I'm wrangled into projects and I'm doing the work for you. Um, it also has come up with the podcast a couple times about like, what is this? What is this thing? Are you earning revenue from it? All these kind of other conversations that you have to have around side things that you do. Um, so it's just one of those kind of opportunities for you to talk to somebody else about why you're doing what you're doing and kind of letting others know that it, it's a fulfilling part of your life. And so being able to have that conversation with your employer is a good thing and something you want to be able to do. If you start feeling like you're running into a, hey, we just can't have you working a side job, then maybe it's time to consider which one you prefer to do more um, and find another job that allows you to have the side job or, you know, turn what you're doing into a full-time gig. Uh, but yeah, so Nick, what's your kind of experience in this realm for having a side business? Yeah, so I wouldn't call the podcast a side business. I would call it a side project that I put a lot of time and effort into. And um, while we are collecting donations through Patreon, thank you. Um, you know, it, we're not taking home any of that money. It's getting all put right back into the show for now, right? We might actually use some of that to go to conferences someday. Um, and that's when it's going to be a little bit more tricky to navigate in in terms of an employer. How, however, I will say from my perspective, I've had employers that both appreciate what I do in this side project um, and I've gotten a slap on the wrist for it and in, in the same uh, in the same company even. So it's like you just have to communicate that you are engaging in this uh, other opportunity here. Um, I think Blake is right. I think by explaining the situation, by explaining that you have a side business and that your line in the sand is kind of an eight to five job where, you know, you're not um, you're not planning to work nights and weekends every, you know, like what's the work life balance? Like we talked about with the other uh, question here, you know, with with the first one that we had with the single mother. Um, what's the work-life balance? And if they don't appreciate that you are working on a side business, uh, then it might be a good sign that you should not uh, entertain that idea as a potential employer. Um, you know, for me, it's like a lot of it's just not understanding what it is that you're doing on the side business. And so the better you can communicate that, right? That's when I had the slap on the wrist. It was like, hey, you're doing this thing without letting us know. Okay, now that we know, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, just, you know, don't no company secrets, obviously. Um, so, you know, and then now like I have employers that are, uh, very much like, oh, this is really cool. Let's promote it within the company. And so there, there it's, it's a gamut, right? And I think yeah. the most important thing is to communicate, uh, which it sounds like you're doing just fine. Um, and then also, you know, using that, uh, reaction or like, like you've described, there are some companies that think it's awesome that you can deliver these products as a separate business, um, and you know those those are the ones that you want to look at personally. I think is the ones yeah. that are going to let you do the things that you want to do on the side. Anything else to add to that, Blake? No, I think we've kind of covered it. The other option there to that'll help you have that conversation, which I have I've had in interviews, is putting your side business and side project stuff in your resume in a highlighted yep. way, uh, because that actually ends up sparking more interesting conversations sometimes than just like maybe the, the traditional stuff that you do. Um, and it can be actually really good for, you know, just a talking point uh, for an interview. I agree. All right, let's get into this next part of the show. It's new, uh, but it's called One More Thing. Yes, this is, well, we're, Blake and I have an opportunity to talk about one more thing. It used to be the banter, but that's what it is now. So Blake, what's your one more thing? All right, my one more thing. So I pulled this. It's it's a, I think it's about a week old. So I wanted to give a shout out to Design Lab, the company that I do design mentorship for. They put out a mentor newsletter and a newsletter to the company like company wide anybody that's on their distro about women in tech. And the biggest thing was providing inclusive resources. So this is something that's become, you know, bigger and bigger. And I'm loving seeing a lot of events from, you know, 
different meetups like UXPLA and in Los Angeles and all that kind of stuff. But this is something that I thought would be super helpful for a lot of reasons in that we talked about this stuff on the show and we we actually did a Reddit question about what what can you do to make an environment more inclusive and seeing this kind of like talk that's from I believe it's it's Esther Duran uh, she's a group design director and global I and D lead for Fjord, a big design agency. Um, and this is like a, a talk that Design Lab put on about what are some actual things you can do to invoke inclusion and diversity in the in your organization, especially if you feel like it's lacking. Um, another resource that I want to point out, and I'll make sure that we put this in our description as well, because I'm getting a lot of kind of questions about it, is how to effectively network. Because we've talked a lot over the past five years, probably, about networking is important. But what does that mean? And, you know, I I am guilty of that all the time. Like just saying, you just got to network. You got to build a network. But this actually lays out some pretty, you know, actionable steps that you can take um, that might be things that you're not doing. And so it's a good kind of like next set of steps. So that's kind of my my two things. Just really wanted to get some more resources for the inclusion and diversity in organizations out there because I feel like it's one of those key topics right now across design organizations um, and likely human factor organizations as well that the more stuff that's out there that we can all you know digest and think about and try to put into place, uh, the better off our companies and products are going to end up being. Like you're already breaking the rule by saying two things. That's okay though. I, have I know. <laughs> just, All right. So I want to get into my two things here. So just to remind everyone, uh, the Human Factors and Ergonomic Society Healthcare Symposium is next week. Um, there, I'll put a link to the description below. It's a virtual event this year. Uh, so no matter where you are, you should be able to attend if you have the means to do so. We highly recommend it. We've had coverage of this event in the past. Um, and has always been a ton of fun. This is kind of late and breaking, so it might not ha may or may not happen, but we might actually be able to provide some coverage of it this year. We'll see. Stay tuned. Uh, check us out on social. We'll we'll let you know. Um, but basically, to remind everyone, this is kind of uh, you know the latest science and best practices for as it relates to human factors in engineering and healthcare. Um, it's a great opportunity to network with other folks. Uh, and, and, you know, not just human factors practitioners. I, I remember you and Elise actually went to this one year and it was, um, it was one of those things where it's not just human factors folks going to these things. It's, you know, medical device companies, biomedical engineers, healthcare providers, FDA representatives, patient safety researchers, tons of different roles from across the spectrum that allow you to network outside of human factors, right? Human factors in engineering, or sorry, human factors in ergonomic society. The conference is very much focused on us as human factors practitioners, but this type of event is interesting because you can network with a bunch of different uh, domains. And so um, again, that's next week. Uh, and kind of my second thing is, um, you know, in honor of this event being next week, we've made our first ever Human Factors Minute uh, that we produced well over a year ago for the Healthcare Symposium. We actually made this free to everyone. So we'll put a link in the description below so you can see what Human Factors Minute is and as it relates to the Healthcare Symposium. So if you want to hear a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. I love it. Uh, yeah, that's it for today, everyone. Let us know what you guys think of the news story this week. Uh, you can hang out with us on our Slack or Discord or get to us on any of our social channels. You can visit our official website or sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date with all the latest Human Factors news. If you like what you hear, you want to support the show, there's a couple things you can do. One, leave us a five-star review. We love those. Two, tell your friends about us. Um, the word of mouth is really helpful. Or three, if you're able, consider supporting us on Patreon. And as always, all our links to our social channels and our website are in the description of this episode. We thank Mr. Blake Arnstor for being on the show today. Where can our listeners go and find you if they want to talk about augmented reality bracelets? So yeah, I yet again have one more thing. So you can always hang out with me in the Discord or the Slack for Human Factors Cast. You can find me across social media at Don't Panic UX, but you can also come hang out with me on Twitch on Sundays as I go through things like building a portfolio. I'm going to shift the office hours to 9.30 PST. So come hang out on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash human factors cast. Um, and at 9.30 PST this Sunday. 
As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me streaming on Twitch Tuesdays at 11 Pacific AM for office hours and across social media at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time, it depends. It depends. All right. If you're on the stream with us, stick around. We're going to do a post show here. Weekend at Posties. Yeah, Weekend at Posties. Cool. All right. I kind of like the banter at the end there. It's like once we get through the important stuff, it's like we can kind of relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah. My brain was really confused. I was like, what What do we, how is there more show? And then I looked at the time. There's plenty of more show. What are you talking about? Yeah. So, so just to let you know, and on the secret, Blake, my personal target for our news stories is anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, gotcha. Uh, as we're recording these episodes. Um, and then I feel like we fill uh, the the it came from section until like 50. So we got a good chunk of like 30 minutes and then 20 minutes. And then our one more thing will be the last 10. And that way it kind of controls us from going on too rambly at the end. <laughs> you yeah, know? because uh, God knows I could ramble. Holy yeah, because we've definitely had those days where we banter for like 20 minutes and it's like, Ooh, <laughs> well, I don't 20 <laughs> minutes to get to the news. Come on. Yeah. Who's definitely fast forwarding on those? Uh -huh. uh, yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Let's see here. We get any more chats? No, not yet. All right. Um, so. This is the post show. You wanted to know how to do some things, Blake. Yes. Um, so uh, for so everyone watching, listening, we're thinking about cutting up the it came from section and posting it on YouTube um, as separate entities. So that way you can search them. That way we have content coming out all week. Um, and we understand that that's valuable content to some folks that, uh, you know, kind of search our show for that stuff specifically. Um, Absolutely. So you wanted to know how to do that. Now, I'm going to try to do this without showing any personal information here on our Twitch channel. <laughs> we'll see here. Got it. So you're just doing uh, it from Twitch. So what I'm doing is I go into Twitch here. Let me see if I can uh, do it for you. So I can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, here I'll, I'll share. It's fine. There's there's nothing here. This is our path to affiliate. Whatever. If Woo. if we get banned for this, then whatever. We're so really um, you can see we have some trouble. Uh, uh, let's see here. Where's our content? Here we go. So you go down to content. You go to video producer, and I'll just show you for last week's episode. So you would download. You'd come over oh, here to episode two hundred. Uh, and download it, um, and then you just do the video processing. Whatever you want to do on your end to make that happen. Sweet. Um, that's kind of what we're thinking. Uh, that's so a party. It's, it's very easy to do, um, and you just clip it up into whatever. Uh, throw on any fancy things that you want to do, like an intro or outro, whatever, and and just make those three clips, and then we drop them on YouTube. Maybe one on maybe one on uh, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, that Monday, way you Tuesday, have the weekend Wednesday. to produce them. Yeah, that's a good one. And then, and then we drop a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But yeah, I think that's a nice one. And right that out way, the week. Yeah, because then we have something on Thursdays. Or what about here? What about this? Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. So, uh, Saturday will be the episode from before. It's going to be weird. You'll you'll do it, schedule it. Um, it won't be from the most recent week, but you know, it'll be up there and available. Uh, we can make a playlist for them. So that way anyone can just go search through that playlist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you want to do a little backlog, uh, we do have up through 97 that you can download. Um, Sick. so we have nothing in, um, do it on the highlight because the highlight is just the episode. You don't have to download the full two hours of the pre post show. All that stuff. I, I'll go in and highlight this after it's done. Um, but you could start so, on episode 197, start at episode 198, then do 199 or something, uh, awesome. and then and then do 201 since we don't have the. Um, oh yeah, we didn't do it in in two. Yeah, it was just our. This is just our friend saying hi. Friend um, hanging. You could do it that way. Uh, if you need help with like a description, just just link back to the original show, link it to our website. So that way, you know, if anyone wants to find it where it came from, link it to our website episode. Um, and, you know, full episode here. If yeah, makes sense. absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, my monitor just totally <laughs> turned off. 
<laughs> oh, so man. What Quality content. On? I've got what my laptop actually might shut down. Oh, boy. Well, if if uh, it does try to hop back on, if not, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and start some of this post processing here. So if you're on with me now. Um, oh, I see what happened. That's hilarious. OK, that's just my is it, yeah, uh, it's all good. My other okay. machine turned on for some reason. Oh, boy. Um, so that's what's going on. All right. No big deal. Let's just grab the other thing. Yeah. One more thing. Um, I like calling it one more thing, too. I think it's it's like a <laughs> I think it's trail, nice. you know, I, I love it. I love it. I, I'm, I'm going to be fully honest. I love packing that stuff at the end. It kind of keeps us focused. It. Yeah, it gets a little more like I, I'm a little more pointed. Like I, I haven't been talking for already like 15 minutes. Yeah. Um. So that's that's good. Keeps me. OK. Oh, good. So, let's share this. So I'll full full transparency here. I actually started a little bit early, which oops. No, we'll do that one. No. What's going on? This one. <sighs> Quality content, folks. Um, I've, Ooh, I've started. Actually, just a little bit. I hate to interrupt you, Nick. There is yeah. one thing I wanted to make sure that we know that we need to talk about. And that oh, is yes. the professional review. Yes. Uh, do we do we want to talk about that on on the post show or do we want to talk about that post post show? Um, let's, let's talk about post post show. I don't, I don't want to like break yeah. up the time. I just want to make sure we're, we're tackling it. In both yeah, I saw page. that. I, I wasn't going to leave without talking to you about that. Um, Excellent. All right. Yes. Cool. One of our patrons. Um, okay. So here we go. Wrist mounted wearable for HCI. So I've, I've condensed it down on this one. Uh, it is, it's full spelled out on our YouTube video. Um, so let's go ahead and find some images i'm going to use the facebook article itself because i feel like those images are what they would consider like a media kit for us to share so i'm going to copy those let's see here i'm just going to grab a couple of them i think this one's fun uh why can't i copy this image oh facebook All oh right. it's not for you no image for you we do a good job of hiding them, but we'll get them. We'll get them. Background image URL. There it is. I found the URL. So we're going to paste this in. A, I know. I'm sorry. I'm doing this off screen, guys. I had a lot of stuff up. I don't want you to get distracted here. Uh, we're going to copy image. You know what? I almost feel like this is good enough. Um, I don't know if we need. I love that else. image so much. It's so cool, dude. I love yeah. it, too. I want to play whatever game that is. Blew there. it up a little bit and uh, kind of pushed it back behind the thing, centered it a little bit, you know, so that way she is front and center. Um, and what if we oh, just, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, no. There we go. And then let's send it to back. This might be the easiest one we've ever done. I, I really dig this image. That was quick fire for sure. Um, and think it's like the perfect uh, arrange, send it back. What do you think? I love it. It's so fun. Wrist mounted wearable for HCI. There we go. That's like it. it. That's it, guys. That's all right. That's the show. No, <laughs> that's the posty. Let's see. We'll go ahead and copy this here. Um, I actually like it here, too. I think this is uh, it communicates exactly what we need it to. Um, we'll send it back. I love this like giant warehouse that they're in, too. I don't, um, and I'll tell you why. Is because they're testing it in a vacuum. They're not testing it in a in a, a real environment where it might be, um, you know. But I, I get it. You want to make sure it works first before you test it with all the other objects that could be around. Um, here, I'm gonna download this. Yeah, I wonder if they got like because I could have met. I mean, Facebook's got so much money; it's insane. I wonder if like they fill up these different spaces with random objects and stuff. Or if this is just a promo shot and there's nothing being tested here at all. It's totally a promo shot. There's nothing being tested there at all. Um, somebody has clearly gone in and like put in these augmented oh, well, yeah. UI yeah. elements. Like it is totally a promo shot, dude. Yeah, because she's not even wearing the the glasses, right? And that's the that's right. a key thing for this whole bit. That was yeah, one thing like, I didn't see anybody doing. Well, uh, okay, granted, we only saw the hands for other stuff, but like, there's uh, there's no augmented reality glasses. What's happening? I don't understand. Yeah, this is this is clearly a promo shot. We're gonna use it for ours. I like it enough. Um, let's see here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this. Let's see. Oh wait, that's not great. What's there? <laughs> Why are we so close? 
What, you don't uh, like being close, Blake? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. No, I'm just more close to my face. Like I'm I'm far I'm pushed up this way. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's not a good look. Let's do that. All right. It's, um it's not good for everybody. All right. Hey, remember that thing I did last week? Uh with the post production stuff. Checklist? Yeah. Uh, I think we should check that out and see um what it is that we have to do. Yeah. That might be nice. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a do good you, thing. Um do you want me to or do you want to like make a post production checklist for you to make sure that all the steps are kind of captured for the um the YouTube content? Is that something that you want to talk about? Yeah, we could do that. All right. So, I'll put uh so at the very bottom of our show notes here, I have uh, so I'll just do this, Nick, and then I'll do Blake down here. All right, actually, let me do my main post show checklist right now, which is sending you the audio. Yeah. Okay. Send Nick audio. We'll we'll start with that. Um, then rip the highlight. Uh, yeah, download highlight on Twitch. Um, or actually, do you want to handle the highlight? Um, because that's something that I do now basically yeah, what do you do yeah so basically what you do is you go into twitch you go into the live stream um i can't show you right now because we're still on the live stream yeah but once it's done yeah. you go in you say highlight and i usually start it right after the countdown ends and i usually stop it right after we say it depends um and gotcha. just do that uh call it the episode i will still add it to my list to update the um the thumbnail and description don't worry about that i got that because those are on my machine um but Sweet. if you highlight it, at least then you can download it right away, like right after we're done streaming uh, and you don't have to wait for me. Um, nice. And that way I can just come in and upload those. So I'll put I'll put you as highlight show. Here. I'll, I'll highlight show download from Twitch. Um, then you're going to cut episodes up, cut episode into ICF sections. Post to YouTube. Schedule for Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Sweet. Because that Thursday night, Friday is kind of taken up by this episode. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I think that's good. And nice. then, And then if we only have two, because sometimes we only do two, right? If we go long on the story or whatever, uh, just schedule for Monday. And if we only have one in the rare case where we only have one, schedule it for monday as well cool start the week off with a little bit of content yeah like um, it okay so we schedule uh do we uh post to youtube description to make sure we link to original episode website link is that clear yeah, you mean like link back to our website? Link to our website. Yeah. Um, and then once published, it's going to be a little weird. Or maybe you can do this as you're going through. Just grab the timestamps um, and post it back on the original articles. As, as oh, us. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Post back to original articles uh, on Reddit as... Um, use timestamp. Um, we have some language that we've used in the past to do that. I think we say something like, uh, here, I have it right here. Tag the username. As part of our podcast on human factors, we like to do community outreach to discuss questions others in the field may have. We chose your question this week. You can listen to our advice here uh, and link it. We've linked at the time we start discussing the question, so you don't need to go searching for it. Please feel free to reach out to us if you need any clarification. Thanks for the great question. So we have some language, right? I can um, actually just copy and paste this in there for yeah, you. To say, you. Just toss that in there. We'll uh, be sure that. to use it. Uh, and then... And th yeah, so, so I think that's a good checklist for you because then killer, we're getting... Yeah. We're getting that community outreach. We're actually reaching out a little further than we have. We're getting more people exposed to the show by responding to them on Reddit. We are um, making more content for YouTube. 
uh, so, so the way I'm thinking about this, Blake, is we have exclusive content for Twitch, which is our office hours. We have exclusive content for YouTube, which will be these. Uh, we have exclusive content on our website, which is our blog. Yep, we're we're kind of everywhere. Yeah, we just need some exclusive uh, content for uh, blah, 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 blah. what's it called? Instagram at some point. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that one I struggle a little bit with. I've just been posting our thumbnails and our blog thumbnails and all that stuff and kind of just tweeting store, not tweeting, uh, making stories that say, Hey, we're live. Come check us out. Um, but it's yeah. stressful. stressful. I think what Absolutely. we're doing now is okay. At least we're engaging with that community. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's something, something is way better than like the zero. Yeah. Previous right? So no big deal. I agree. Um, all right, let's see here. I am looking through my post list to see if there's anything that we should do right now while we're on the show. YouTube thumbnail done. Podcast art done. Audio pr production will be done later tonight. Show description. I guess we could do that now. Let's just make sure that this is all good. So it came from, we need to write those down. What did we do? We did the, uh, one thing I want to get better about is actually posting the links to these because ugh, quitting my new job after six weeks in, in question mark, how bad is this? Do I even care? Question mark. Um, yeah, we'll we'll be better about posting those links. I can't handle praise from my mentor. Maybe wait on these ones because some of them are have been sticking around for a while. Uh, you use the judge, like it, you be the judge. I don't know whether or not. Uh, it's worth it to go follow up with some of these things that we've had in here for weeks. Yeah. I mean, we could, it can't hurt I, at the end of the day. It could still content for us and we can, if, if the thing still exists and the thread's still there, it's not that big of a deal to just take the boilerplate text, replace some stuff, throw it in there. Yeah. What would you say to a company? Get it. Cause that's too far. What would you say to a company that doesn't like the fact that you, you have a side business? that doesn't like the fact that you've a side business. Okay, so I'm going to grab these. I'm going to post them down here in our show notes. Again, if you're hanging out with us, thank you. Um, really appreciate the live, uh, the live stream folks that are hanging out with us. How do you say it's that? It's so much. It's, <laughs> I think you did it perfectly. I do enjoy the fact that we do have some people that, come, that seem to come pretty regularly to hang. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. If you uh, have where... any questions, please feel free to just ask. Because, I mean, that's part of the reason for the post show is to, yes, let Nick get some stuff done as well as myself. But at the same time, if there's things that we can help you with, love to talk with you. Love to talk with you. Where did I put my bit.ly? There it is. This design lab link is atrocious. Is it? Look at is that it. nasty it one. Oh yeah, I try not to look. Oof, it's right huge. There. It's that? awful. Get out of here. That's much better. The worst. Oh, shoot. Oh no. Oh, what have I done? Oh geez. Okay. Putting together a podcast, folks. This is quality content. Um, I'm actually. And after last week, I'm I'm pretty jazzed on where we're at as a podcast. Tbh, I think. Tbh, absolutely. <laughs> to be serious. To be serious. Yeah, I mean it's it's come so flipping far. It's still nuts to think about that it's 200 episodes in. Five years in, dude. That's uh, a yeah. lot. One more thing. There it is. It's several things. <laughs> um okay i'm gonna find these links uh ooh, shoot uh i should just search these topics and see if that was come up right that's probably the uh it's probably the easiest way to do it, right oh geez no it's not ah oh, shoot it's not damn it google not well flip 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 adelphia all right let's Hold on. Where was it? Ah, oh, it was one of the recent ones too. Definitely do the quitting my job six weeks in. That one's very recent. Um, 
yeah. the link. And we'll see what happens when we post this link in here, if it's just atrocious or if we need to shorten it. No, I think that's fine. Oh, wait. That's not it. That's not Jeez. the thing. There it is. Okay, we'll do that. We'll post it here. Uh, it's not great, but it's not bad either. I think that's fine. What do you think? Let's take a peek. Uh, it could be worse. Yeah, but okay. That's, I think it'll be all right. I can't handle. All right. Well, tell me what the last one is really quick. It's um, what do uh, you yeah, say? Well, what do you say to a company that doesn't like the fact you have a side business? Is that the exact words? What do you say? Yeah. What? What would you say? What would you say? Yeah. Oh, geez. Why is this not coming up? Is it that far back? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, yeah. This one's really far back. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Maybe this one's okay if you don't <laughs> follow up. <laughs> 1,000 years old. What would you say to a company that doesn't like that you have? Oh, shoot. Where is that? Where'd you pull it from? Was it Slack or Reddit? Or did you pull it from our Slack automation? Yeah. Because it might be yeah. easier just to find it in there. That's what, that's where I'm looking. Oh, shoot. That's not good. There well, it is. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. We're good. Cool. We're good. I'm going to stick the landing. Uh, okay. I need to be better about posting these links because... Okay. All right. So we have... The Facebook article, we have the it came from, we have the one more thing. We're going to go ahead and post these as what size 10. Let's just make size 10 everything. Lovely size 10s. And there we go. I like that. Uh, recorded on April 8th. Already put some taggies in there. Facebook, wearable, augmented, virtual, mixed reality, AR, VR, MR, XR. Uh, let's see. We got our things there. Yeah, thank you. Ba, 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 All right. So now I can cross off a couple things from my list. We've done the YouTube thumbnail, the podcast art. Uh, those are good to go. We have um, the, well, you'll highlight the show as soon as we're done. Um You'll download the full show. I need to still download the full show for our patrons. They get the full audio version of the show. Um, let's see. What we yes. Here. Uh, show description. That is done. So content generation is almost done. We just need to do the audio production. That'll be done later. Uh, schedule patrons. Choose the news. Weekly Q&A scheduled for Monday. Let's see if those are good. Um, so I'm going to check on our Patreon. Patron. Patrons scheduled. All right. So we have the choose the news is scheduled for tomorrow. That's good to go. Oh, let me edit it and delete the Facebook one because what I started did doing that one. Yeah. Facebook's wearable. There we go. We delete that one. And then. Oh, Blake, the drama with the Patreon polls. Oh, what are we even going to do? <laughs> so I think what's going on uh, is the fact that there are so many people that want to hear everything. This is this is oh, my... Oh, there it and, is. And I think it's my fault because I'm saying click on whatever you want to hear um, and not limiting oh. it to choose the thing that you want to hear. And so because of that, everyone's choosing everything because I, what I would like to think can. is that the topics that we've chosen are very good. Um, and so, uh, if I have them choose one, um, you know, we'll, we'll choose at least wisely. be able to, yeah, they'll, they'll be more selective and, um, we'll truly get to hear what they want to hear from our community, ah. from our com community, That's um, hilarious. just okay. go through it and just tap everything. That's some stuff mm -hmm. I would do. Yeah. Oh, I love all this. This is great. This yep. Is These are all fun. Really let's make them talk about all of them like it's the old show all right let's get this weekly q a scheduled so we're gonna hit a new post we're gonna go 
Oh, geez, what is this text? This is a weekly Q&A. We had no questions this week, and I forgot to check, oops, before we went on, and um, why there was a little bit of a stall at the top of the it came from section. <laughs> I didn't even notice it, to be honest, so that's all right. Oh, then it was effective. All right, happy Monday, everyone. Don't forget about the news stories this week. This week's patrons choose the news can be found here. And uh, I will update that link as soon as that is scheduled. So this is going to be from Monday a.m. at like, what, 6 a.m. or something. That's fine. Uh, patrons. Patrons, blah, 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 blah. Yep, there we go. And we will schedule that, so that's good to go. Oh, wait, hold on. Need to change the date. Quality content here, folks. Uh, 12 after, that's fine. Oh, show, what do you want? It's a hang, man. It's no. a hang. If you're here with us live, it's a hang. Yep. Basically. Um, Let's see here. Let's get some. I'm actually really uh, impressed with the exposure that we've gotten. And in fact, I've set up our Google Analytics so we can see a little bit more, uh, a little better how we're, uh, wh what people are looking at on our website. That's good. Yeah, it's cool. Especially since um... there's so much content related to the website now. Uh, it would be nice to see like what's super successful, what, like as you add different kind of stuff like the blog, how it mm -hmm. impacts the use and stuff. Yeah, well, I think because we've been super active on LinkedIn, um, the blog and episode 200 are the most clicked on items right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, dude, I, I'll be honest. I don't know how to look at Google Analytics and interpret it. Um, like I, I'm looking at some of these like, our insights here and i'm just like e okay what is what does this mean just numbers what is it what's in the insight section it's been a your long site performs time. above average for 2560 by one uh 1440 uh oh great so it's really really good performance wise in large viewports that's awesome yeah. website Thanks, performance guys. week over week great work you just hit a new record for monthly users fewer users that's return good. to your site in march your site performs below average for 1440 by 900 <gasps> well, uh, let's see here. Where do you get your users from? Let's see. Where are my top default channel groupings? What campaigns have the most successes? Uh, yeah, we're not really running any campaigns, are we? No, no yeah. campaigns over here. <laughs> it's all us. I wish I could transfer my don't panic ad campaign dollars or whatever to human factors. I need to look into that and see if I can do it. Maybe. I don't know. Because, I mean, I'm not using them because I'm not really promoting a whole anything through Don't Panic. Um, I just use it for my domain names and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to buy a couple domains and have them all linked to Human Factors Cast. There we go. You know, I thought about this the other day, and maybe this isn't a, as good of idea as it was like probably three years ago. But is there an issue with using just HFC as our um, domain name? It's probably taken. That's probably the issue. Bummer. Uh, yeah, that would have been because that would have been pretty sick for just to use HFC for everything. Because people can remember three letters and they usually don't spell them wrong. It's hard to spell human factors cast wrong, too. I but, guess. Uh, There's a lot of letters in there. I can mistype things, no problem. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, Versus um, three yeah. singular letters. All right, I'm looking at this. I don't know what else we can do here. Oh, patron stuff. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where are we looking at? Uh, weekly Q&A scheduled. Scheduled choose the news. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so that's all good. I think, yeah, we're pretty good on stuff here. Uh, oh, yeah, but are we good on human factors minutes or do we need to do another bulk adjustment? Um, let's chat after the show because we got the next year planned and, nice. and recorded and uploaded and all that stuff. So we'll talk after the show on that one. And because, um, again, those that's Patreon only content. Don't want to spill the beans. Uh, oh, here. no. 
you know what on that note it's it's 29 after i think we can go ahead and get out of here uh thank you everyone for hanging out with us on the show uh by the way hfc.pizza is available as a domain name so yes. if you want to do that that is 60 dollars per year i am totally um, about to get hfc pizza hfc.best hfc fans uh hfc plus hfc games soccer Anyway, thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. Uh, it's been a great, uh, great episode 201. Um, check us out on our on our uh, the website thing. That's a thing that we're plugging. I don't know. Check me out on Tuesdays, Office Hours, Blake, your Sundays at 9 now, 9.30. 9.30. 9.30. All right. Out. Come hang out with us. It'll be fun. Exclusively on Twitch. Uh, and be on the lookout for our YouTube content. We might publish that out soon. So take a look. It's in a book, Reading Rainbow. We're probably going to get DCMA'd for that. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.